Microsoft brought a new finance AI chatbot. This is not the first. There has been AI inside of Excel as an example for a long time. What is, what's new here? So Microsoft has worked on this theme of various co-pilots throughout the company. They've had co-pilot for sales, co-pilot for service, and now they are introducing Microsoft co-pilot for finance. And I mean, the truth is, is that within every function of the business, there are very specific applications that can be uh, more efficient, more productive, easier, uh, and can be integrated with Copilot. Um, this is the next step, the next phase. You know, Pat, you and I, we'll just use ourselves as an example. There's a lot of reports that we ask from our team, right? And as our companies have grown and our teams have grown, and we now have our systems, we have ERP, we have CRM, but of course you've got Usually in most companies, financial analysts are working through uh, piles of CSVs, right? They're, they're doing, uh, you know, collections or data reporting. They're doing AR data reporting, uh, receivables. They're doing payables uh, analysis. They're doing, um, you know, just different kinds of workflows that are critical to a business performance. And a lot of it's being done by hand. A lot of it's being done, you know, you got to either extract the data out of a your system or you're working on these spreadsheets and it takes time to make decisions so what if you could make it easier you could you know connect your financial system you can in by the way dynamics sap um i think over time you might see that extend into others uh you know you can build workflow automations you can build guided actions you can you know you can basically get through a number of different you know reporting capabilities. What about a cash flow forecast, for instance? How would you want to work on that? You know, and by the way, I got to see the demonstrations here. And so you can basically use an, uh, a co-pilot. It can have a number of pre-can sort of capabilities. And then, of course, you can trigger and ask it different questions to get an idea. How can you look at cert certain business behaviors right now, like the inflow of sales orders versus the outflow of project work? and then be able to deterministically know, will we be creating more cash or less cash? It has to then, you know, take, it, take into consideration uh, typical pay cycles, you know? These are a lot of things that people don't think about. Oh, we sold, so the business is gonna be fine. Well, you know, what if, you know, you've got to do X amount of work, but your average payable uh, receivable comes in in 120 days, but your average payable is in 30 days. After a certain period of time, that discrepancy is hard. So first of all, I love this for smaller companies. Because smaller companies tend to have a lack of resources to even do these kinds of evaluations. Bigger companies have so many of these evaluations to do that it also is very useful to potentially be able to pull these together. But this goes back, Pat, to more of just finances one more tentacle in what co-pilots are doing to enable businesses, finance, sales, service. Um, and I really like that. So look, this is a step in the right direction. You know, you got to you know, be able to streamline your processes. You want to be able to use these tools. You want to be able to do a generative inquiry, right? So you can talk to your system, ask it a question in a natural language, and then be able to get highly valuable insights. And, you know, even generate um, something like an email out, you know, to make a collection or to notify someone in your org of what collection needs to be made. These are just little examples but this is what it really is to me it's a number of small financial capabilities all strung together to help a company run more effectively wow dan that was that was some smooth analysis there was that a smooth operator no. you know, it's interesting i as i was looking through this i tried to delineate between whether this is a new category or doing something uh, a lot better and it, it's almost it's almost both, right? I think you you said it well that we're doing a lot of this via spreadsheets. We're also doing this uh, with executive dashboards uh, as as well through either Tableau or NetSuite or Microsoft 365, uh, things like that. And but I think that this could be a new category, an incremental service that you would want to pay Microsoft for. And I think it's right in their sweet spot of, of productivity, which I think is good. I like the, I like the ingest from, from uh, external sources like SAP and things out of the Microsoft Copilot Studio. 
I wish the company would have talked a little bit more uh, about data, right? Uh, about uh, how it can pull in data, how it can protect data that that they pull in. Uh, you know, kind of like as we'll talk, sales, Salesforce's data cloud. I wish they had talked more uh, about that, and maybe they expect you to know how that data is pulled in into Microsoft Copilot Studio, but I don't think a lot of people do that. And I guess if you were serious about it and you were a large company, uh, you would you would get there. But it was a a little bit of a a question. Now, Microsoft Copilot Studio, you know, consider it as a kind of a clearinghouse for uh, APIs. They've got over a thousand. Uh, pre-built connectors and plugins, Workday's in there, SAP's in there. But how do you, you know, how do you pull in custom data? But then again, Dan, like you said, maybe this is more of a small and medium business solution where you're thinking less about that. I, yeah. I guess no, medium businesses do. They have an IT staff. They do worry about this. Maybe this is more of a a small business. Um, well, I mean, I, 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 and I mean, obviously, you can CSV data outside of a, of an ERP system and drop it into a spreadsheet. Use it for things like FP&A, different planning necessities. Of course, it's another co-pilot they've worked on this financial planning analysis, but also for just finance collections, you know, accounts reconciliation. I mean, Pat, this stuff is takes tons and tons of time and brain matter, and you know, you've got. You know, an efficiency thing, Pat. I call it the whisper of the street that no one talks about. Is companies are looking to to reduce staff, and I, I know this is not anything at Microsoft. Dan, did you say this out loud? Yeah. Well, I'm saying it out loud, Dan. And listen, I'm not saying they're saying this here or in this case at anything to do with Microsoft. Listen, thing. Microsoft would never say that here. No, no. They would say augmenting, augmenting. Well, that's things. well. What I say, Pat, is you got to prune the tree for it to grow healthily. Yeah, it's so funny. I said that same thing. I don't know if I copied you on that. I put that in a tweet the other day. So I probably did. I've been I've been running around town saying that for like the last couple of months. It's become my it's become kind of my my ethos about business is like, you know, healthy plants grow right when you prune them. And you know it sounds somewhat cynical, but the fact of the matter is is it's how you create a fast growth culture. But it's also, you know, this is where the the comments from like IBM's Arvin Krishna and others that got kind of reamed for saying AI would reduce. It's not a permanent reduction, but if you have the exact same roles right now and you have look to have those in the future, a certain percent of those roles will be eliminated by AI. And guess what? Yeah. Like every industrial revolution is going to happen here. The question is what gets created. And that's still yeah. a, bit, a, bit, a bit more of a mystery. We're not going to go kick another wormhole to go down, but uh, I, I like I like talking about these things. It's interesting.